Welcome to Executives at the Edge, a podcast brought to you by MEF. I'm your host, Pascal Menezes. Join me as we explore thought-provoking perspectives from the leaders and change makers who are propelling enterprise digital transformation forward. I'm so very excited to have Declan Ganley, CEO from Vada Networks, join us on today's Executives at the Edge. Today, you're going to hear about a very revolutionary idea about a new kind of internet, which they're calling the Outernet in space. And it's a very powerful idea. So Declan, with that, welcome to Executive at the Edge. And if you don't mind, give our listeners a little bit of an overview about yourself, but more importantly, about the company and what you're doing in this Outernet area. Sure. Now, thanks for having me. Great to be on. Um, uh, executives at the Edge. Uh, I, I like to think of myself as someone that, who has been an executive at the Edge for a long time. Um, I'm uh, an entrepreneur. I'm Irish, um, uh, CEO of a US company, Revada Networks, and a German company, Revada Space Networks. Uh, Revada Networks has uh, been focused for a good number of years on sort of defining what will be the next era of communications, um, not in a small step, but in a, a very big step. Um, and part of that uh, jump, um, that revolution uh, that uh, is, is underway and that we are leading is the creation of something called the Outernet. We're calling it the Outernet. And that is a distinct and separate, much more secure and faster network of communications that is truly global and that connect can connect the, the any one part of the surface of the planet to any other part of the surface of the planet without having to touch the internet. Um, and uh, to do that, what we have um, have uh, yeah, designed and I innovated for is the creation of a low Earth orbit space based uh, constellation um, uh, that is made up of uh, twenty four orbital planes at in polar orbits uh, at 1,050 kilometers altitude, uh, and we'll be putting 600 routers uh, into low Earth orbit space. They're satellites. Each one of them will have four lasers, uh, creating a, a mesh. Think of it like sort of a fishing net cast around the whole planet, including uh, the poles. So from pole to pole, right across all of the enveloping the whole planet. And that network, without having to touch any subsea cables or ground relay stations or anything else, will be able to join point to point uh, in a way that is faster because you're not touching the internet, you're not going through subsea cables. So anything over 4,000 kilometers is going to be faster than anything that exists in the world right now. And because there are far fewer uh, attack points or vectors um, for uh, to, to get onto that network, um, it will be inherently more secure uh, even before you get into doing things like encryption and every, the normal stuff. The architecture of this network itself physically makes it inherently more secure. So that is the outernet. We think it's going to be um, a huge step forward. We think it's going to be the biggest thing, frankly, since the internet. Um, and it's uh, something that already in our engagement with uh, future uh, customers and potential customers, uh, they're really understanding that th this is a game changer, and uh, we're getting getting a lot of track a lot of traction for that. We've built a team of uh, people from across the industry that are executing on this plan. We have issued contracts to launch providers, satellite manufacturers, and many others uh, to get the uh, mission completed. And uh, our first uh, the first deployment of our uh, uh, constellation, our full const our full, full plane of, of our constellation uh, will be taking place in in uh, in late spring of 2025. We have a precursor mission before that. Well, Declan, that is really impressive. I mean, think I mean I I don't know that no one's doing this. This is very very incredible. Your outer net idea that basically you know you have routers in the sky and so it's a big big mesh network up in in the space. And um, is this Leo technology? It, well, I wouldn't call it Leo technology. It's it's because it, Leo. I don't mean to be pedantic here, but but Leo is not a technology per se. It's it's a position. It's a it's a sorry an orbit. Uh, no, no, not at all. It's an orbit. I'm glad you asked because that's a question that you know, most people would have. Um, 
Leo is low means low Earth orbit. It's low Earth, so it's it's where the where the, the physical real estate, if you like, that you're you you're, you're occupying is. What altitude do you fly your satellites at? And for folks that are more familiar with as as you know, I come from the the terrestrial wireless uh, 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 industry for decades. Think about it like this: so um, you know. In terms of proximity to the planet, Leo can come in different flavors. It's like the difference between being on top of the hill with your cell, your cell phone tower and looking down into the valley, or if you're one of the later entrants, you end up lower down in the valley, so you need more cell towers to get the same coverage area. Um, and while that's not a perfect analogy, it's not a bad one. And uh, something that I think is important uh, that's more of a regulatory issue than a technology one is that the spectrum, the radio spectrum that um, low Earth orbit satellite constellations are using um, is shared spectrum. So it's not like people that come from the terrestrial realm will be used to, you know, let's say at t or Verizon or Vodafone or whoever. They go to a spectrum auction, they buy a b- block of spectrum and they have exclusive use over that block of spectrum. That's not how it works for satellite uh, constellations. This, the, the, the spectrum is shared. It's much more like um, boarding a plane and it, it's, it, it's think about it, the way they allocate these rights is on a priority basis. So if you have um, an earlier, more mature filing, you have your boarding group one. If you have a later, less mature filing, you will maybe boarding group three or four or five. Now, it doesn't matter if you're boarding group three or four if the whole um, if the plane is empty. If it's full, you want to be on boarding group one. Um, I'm glad to say that in our case, Rivada's uh, licenses, uh, our frequency rights, uh, our spectrum, if you will, is uh, is in a, a has the highest uh, priority. Um, so we we that's the KA band spectrum. We actually use KA band. Um, and uh, we, you know, which posi- positions us well, and is and while to be very clear, it doesn't. It, it, you know, if you're boarding group one on a plane, it doesn't mean you can punch boarding group two in the face. You have to be polite and cordial. Um, but there is an understood sort of order of who gets to go first. Um, but you have to be polite. You have to be a good neighbour. And this isn't something that's going to cause a problem for other operators or doesn't obviously create conflicts. But it's better to have one than have five, for example, and we have one. Well, that's that's really impressive. So, Declan, you know, there is a rapidly increasing landscape of convergence between terrestrial and satellite networks. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what 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 does this future look like uh, for the expansion of enterprise? What, what does the connectivity look like, and what role does Rivada play in this area? Yeah, what well, well, we're calling this, what we aim to provide is network as a service uh, and, and the kind of customers that we are looking to serve are, are not you know, normal consumers as you were. We are focused on enterprises and and governments. Um, we will have, it, the, the network that we're, we've designed and are deploying is, is MEF compliant. So um, and understanding in the fact that we come from the world of terrestrial wireless, we we really understood that point uh, that you make about the the you know, the need for interoperability from the get go. Um, the MEF standards cover also APIs used in interactions between service providers and their customers, so that lowers the friction of 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 you know those those interactions as well. The vision is that any current or future user of terrestrial carrier Ethernet services, uh, they'll be able to incorporate our services into their solution. So any enterprise-grade connectivity provider would be able to extend their coverage to this entire world, to the whole globe, using the Ausenet, using Rivada's Ausenet. That, that's actually really impressive. You know, So you're selling to the enterprises, uh, either two channels or direct, and basically these enterprises get access to a global network without touching the internet and basically just got to get up into the outer net and then go anywhere on the planet and come back down anywhere they want. Is that correct? Very well put. That's, I couldn't have said it better myself. In fact, you did a better job than I did. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is really, really impressive. So, you know, you, I don't think anybody's doing this. This is like very, very cool. No, no. And to your point, no one's doing this. I, I you know, 
and look, there's lots of layers to this. If you, yeah, for anyone that's watched watched Shrek, he said ogres are like like an onion; they have layers, and communication networks are like onions too. That they got layers, and sometimes they make you cry. But w- what we have is is um, you have in the internet. So take the internet; you've got the most complex, publicly available, and democratic communication layer that exists. Everybody's free to use it, and everybody's equal on it, and it's a people's layer. The outer net is a different layer to the onion. It's an outside of the public infrastructure. It's so it's safer. It offers guarantees of quality of service. So we will be able to do um, to, 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 to get, yeah, I mean, a QoS guarantee like that's going to be great. And it's an enterprise and government layer. So that's, we're another layer to the communications onion. I think this is probably going to be the most important layer since the internet. Um, and it's going to allow things to happen that that have never been able, never been possible before. And that that's how we're different from all other players. We're not an internet play. We're a global enterprise grade private network, and we're catering to a different set of users. And we're offering them to governments and enterprises something that no one else can offer. There there may be sort of you know versions of this, but but they're not. If you've got a bent pipe architecture, that means you go up to the satellite and then you have to land it back into the internet somewhere to a relay station, a ground station. You're not out in it um, because you're, you, you're, you're having to go back into the traditional internet layer of the onion. We are a completely different layer. Yeah, I totally, I totally get this. So what, what this does is it really allows, well, you tell me, what, what does this allow from a legacy and planned network point of view like how are these new technologies different from all these other legacies and planned networks let me put it that way uh so so the technology is different because it doesn't touch the internet um because it's inherently more secure and and for the the the, the reasons i've explained now we're also making sure that 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 satellite delivery mode which is a relative novelty to carry Ethernet ecosystems uh, is properly addressed in the standards, in the MEF standards. So we're engaging MEF certified vendors to to get elements of our system from them. So our customers and our partners will be able to use standard APIs to integrate their businesses and communication systems with ours to be compatible with what they've already got. Um, And we're learning from carrier Ethernet users and providers we're learning what their requirements are and the ways they they way they they use these services and the way that they like to do business with and, and interact with the outernet. So that's a, an iterative process as well. And once we're operational in 2025, our services will become MEF certified, and this should give our our partners um, yeah, and sh- show to our partners that we've been successful. In lifting the enterprise layer of uh, enterprise layer of connectivity off the surface of the Earth and moved it into space, so we're taking the enterprise layer of connectivity, we're taking it off the surface of the planet, we're putting it into space, and that's going to create the type of freedom that you talked about earlier on, where somebody that let, I, I, it could be in New York or it could be in, in in Africa can now turn what was a confined area service into a global service and that's a big game changer yeah so Declan do you so you're talking about MEF certified carry ethernet but you also have the APIs that MEF have come up with the full business and operational APIs that's 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 the idea yeah that's very impressive so basically your enterprise customers can directly use APIs or portals yep or you could basically be a partner to many many service providers who are then adding on top, you know, very kind of sassy services or cloud connected. Exactly. Services. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's very powerful. So they can order and provision your services on demand through these um, MEF APIs, Sonata, which are business and operational APIs. Um, mm-hmm. This is very, very impressive. So what, yep. how, how will this on demand connectivity NAS drive the next leg of communication revolution? Well, you know, the, the, Whatever I say to you on this will only be would only be partially right. So you know, and I recognize as an entrepreneur, you know, the the way that you think things are going to be used, um, you know, you you never get it a hundred percent spot on. But what we're creating here is a tool and a plat. I mean, I don't know how old you are, but I'm fifty five now, right? So 
I remember when the internet started and and, and I, even, I even people saying like, it'll never catch on. And uh, really, I do remember that. And uh, people could not have envisioned at the beginning of the internet, um, you know, all of the, how they couldn't have imagined Uber, right? They couldn't have imagined, um, you know, all of the different apps and, and, and services that we use uh, that uh, yeah, on a day-to-day -day basis and all the new business, multi-billion dollar uh, businesses and whole industries that have been born because of the availability of the internet, you know, Netflix and yeah, all of these things. And just, it's amazing how, how it's expanded. The outernet, I don't want to say to you that for sure that the outernet is going to be as big as that, but it might be. And so I can't sit here and tell you this is how this particular sector is going to use this um, to their benefit. But I know that entrepreneurs and business leaders in specific sectors are going to come up with ways of using the outernet, you know, whether they're in the natural resources field, whether they're in, you know, it, it, you know uh, digital media, whether they're in security services, whatever it may be, there are going to be a, a vast array of derivative uses of the outernet, some of which we could imagine, some of which we can't imagine. But what I'm doing is providing the tool, what we are doing, I shouldn't say I, it's our, our whole team. Uh, what we are doing is providing a tool and a platform, the outernet, that we think is going to change the world. Yeah, that is very, very impressive. And I, I have to say that I really think this is so innovative idea. It's very, very powerful. And the ability to then just act, so you're not going to add in like all kinds of other services, just pure connect, raw connectivity in the outer net. It gets you, like you said, this incredible um, speed, right? And uh, right. speed meaning that you propagation delays, right? Because you're on the out outside of the planet, not down on the ground and using fiber. Um, I hope I have that right. And no, no, you, you, you're correct, and 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 of course, people can choose choose to blend those things, exactly. you know, and, and they will, and they will, and, they will. and then um, they can put SD WAN on top, right, and, and right. then decide which of the networks they want to use. And this is truly a business grade network, so it's very, very powerful. And like you said, the points of it's almost like a private network because the points. No, no, it, it it is a private. Yeah, network. that's a really good point. This isn't a virtual anything. This is a a real private network. Um, a, 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 there's nothing virtual about it. So it's it's an actual private network, and, but it's the first one in history that covers the whole planet. Yeah, I mean, very, literally very covers the idea. whole planet. And I, I yeah. can see that. Getting back to to the questions here. So what do you see? You know, you, this is a NAS, this is part of a NAS offering. So you're not offering NAS directly, but you have all the APIs, automation so that any yeah. NAS provider, as we move to network as a service from all these service providers, they can, or enterprises, they can utilize your network as part of their overall strategy. Right. Right. So yes. how do you see this going forward? Like MEF's working on not only underlays of the carry Ethernet, we talked about certification standardization. Does this also support, I, can they, do they put their own IP routers on top or can they use IP directly with you and peer directly with you on, on the IP layer? Or and do you have an overlay SD WAN offering, or does that's where all your partners come in? And what about so that, 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 that that's more where where the partners come in. So so as I mentioned earlier, you know that we, we we've got this you know, dialogue going now with yeah you know, we've we've signed over six billion dollars of MOUs already um, uh, with with you know future customers and potential customers, um, and that that number is growing literally every month. Um, but you know, right now it's an iterative process, right? We go, we say, well, what do you need? And and you know, and, and you know, not surprisingly, um, you know, no two customers are identical in, in in their needs. And so, this is the point where we're engaging with customers, be they you know from the traditional, you know, wireless and communication sector to uh, different types of customers, enterprise customers, and, and government customers. And um, and we're seeing, you know, what they anticipate their needs being, and we're we're catering to them um, to to make sure that we're when when we turn the outernet on, it can it is as user friendly and relevant to them as we can possibly make it. Uh, you know, Declan, you're you're spot on, and I don't know if you know this, but 
one of the things I think we see a lot of enterprise customers asking to the service provider community is give visibility, give observability capabilities. And so I think that as you make this available, you know, MEF's operational APIs become very powerful. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but I hope to see more and more, more participation from Ravada space networks and or Ravada networks in general in this operational aspects because yes. the business aspects of quoting, ordering, buying, you know, it's, all, it's provisioning is fine, but more and more customers want to understand, okay, well, now I've got all that up and running. How well is it performing? You know, what are the yes. faults and all that? And they want to understand that. They don't want to just be blinded to that. So um, well, we, we actually set something up I don't know if I should be saying this, but we but but we we actually set up uh, something called a cust- our customer advisory board, um, where um, you know key future customers are actually gone onto an advisory board, and we're getting really active input from them, um, and uh, they really they hugely appreciate it. You know, this is such a revolutionary t- you know offering technology offerings. Or whatever you want to call it. And the fact you're doing it from space is even powerful. So, you know, Declan, thank you for your time. I think this was such an incredible, enlightening episode for me. I had no idea Ravada Space Networks or Ravada Networks was doing all of these amazing, yep. cool ideas and technologies. And certainly, being an entrepreneur myself, I can really appreciate, you know, from in conception to actually, or inception, to actually basically just drive this and the amounts of complexities and to get this all up and running for the outer net. And there's, <laughs> there are so many oh, things you have. It's to been right. wild. It's been wild. It's been absolutely, it, it's been wild. It's been exciting. It's been bloody hard. Um, and, uh, and very, very fulfilling. And, you know, we've, we've had our more than our fair share of luck as well into, into the mix. So, uh, all of those things are necessary and they're all ingredients to success. And without sort of trying to sound like I'm, yeah, uh, this is a platitude, but but this is the kind of the biggest part of the luck that's been involved here is that we have managed to put together a team. A team has come together here of extraordinary talent um, from around the world, and uh, that team meant that we were able to surmount obstacles that otherwise were in, would have been insurmountable for others. And it's it's that dynamic, you know, the you, the the um, the team that we have built in Rivada is um, it's the best team I've ever worked. I've worked with great teams, it, luckily, through my career. But this is the best team I've ever worked with. They're absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, Declan, my hats off to you, and um, good luck with this venture. And and sounds like you've got a huge pipeline of customers lining up. So very impressive. And thank you for on being on the show. And I'm sure our listeners will be very excited and intrigued about all of this offering that Ravada Space Networks is doing. So thank you. Thank you. Thanks for joining us for Executives at the Edge. Don't miss an episode. Subscribe today. Share online a review. Find all our episodes on your favorite podcast platform and at left.net.